Jumbo and good morning. Welcome to Bistek this show. We want to focus on medical tourism and I want to throw some statistics around you uh, because when you're talking about you're talking about an industry that is valued at about 50 billion shillings. I mean 50 billion US dollars. I got it wrong. 30. This industry is expected to double in terms of growth with numbers expected to be 100 billion US dollars. So you're not talking about by all means. And the numbers currently stand at about 29 million people always on the move on May. And so Kenya has been on an aggressive push to try and make it a regional medical uh, tourism hub. What strategies do we need to put in place to ensure that and surpass? And also we shall be discussing the trend in the real estate industry. The number I'll be sharing with you what they are talking about. And remember Kenya, uh, the government has also been very aggressive in pushing for the affordable housing. What you forget is that the affordable housing agenda is not a Kenya Kwanzaa administration agenda. No, 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 no. It is a party agenda, which was crafted back in 2008. I'll be telling you more about these. And of course, remember the Constitution also talks about... It talks about uh, affordable and accessible housing rights for all Kenyans. These are the topics that we shall be discussing here. And remember, they are tracking what's happening and we shall be crossing over just to get a glimpse of what's happening in the county around you. My name is I'm sure that I mean business when you see me because this is Bischik and I have my team of experts in the studio. Who am I talking about? He's a general manager, uh, managed Medicare. He's joining us on the show. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Martin, for your time. Edwin, for your time. Edwin, we have... Um, um, uh, Dr. Ernest Moravi, he's a head of doctors at Car. Thank you very much, Dr. Ali, for your time. Thank you. You're not on strike. No. <laughs> <laughs> not Why at aren't all. you on strike? <laughs> your colleagues are on strike. Think about that because right. we are in the private sector. So fantastic. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I want to start here with uh, Kigode. I mean, you've been in the medical field and especially more in the you know, for the longest time. Um, when we talk about medical tourism, what exactly are we talking about? Okay. Uh, it would be considered as an opportunity where somebody or a patient who desires medical attention chooses to travel. Mm -hmm. Mostly driven by specialized care or they desire to get better outcomes. Mm -hmm. yes. Do they choose to travel or the uh, In the words of medical tourism, you would consider that they choose to travel, but uh, when you look at the broader sense of medical tourism, that force people to travel to get medical attention. Mm -hmm. yes. um, I, I still want to pick, your, to pick your brain on that issue. I mean, you have a situation whereby, you know, um, expertise that you need is not available in your country and, and, and therefore the only way you can access this is by traveling tourism when you're forced by circumstances I would say that uh, that would then be medical uh, for specialized treatment but not very much in the sense of medical tourism but mm -hmm. uh, the broader word tourism or medical both those that are going out uh, voluntarily to seek medical care or medical checkups, but as well uh, it, uh, those who are also forced by circumstances to go and get medical attention. Mm -hmm. as, uh, yeah. um, I, I <coughs> want to hear this from uh, Dr. Ernest. I mean, look at the field of medical tourism, and Kenya mm -hmm. has been, you know, has been on a campaign to try and market the country as a medical tourism hub. Of specialization, uh, do we see a lot of uh, patients coming in from uh, uh, into the country? For uh, thanks a lot. I think I'd like to begin by saying is already a center of medical tourism because medical tourism is a is, is a term that is to refer to the pursuit of medical services, usually specialized care. Mm -hmm. We sometimes see people. 
Some people come uh, to Kenya from another country to pursue wellness checks. Uh, but most of the time, it is the pursuit of specialized that uh, drives people into what we loosely call medical tourism. And so it is understood that specialties are oftentimes not available in their home countries, like cardiology, or pediatrics, uh, and other specializations like women's health, or sub-specializations where they come for specific surgery, intestinal surgery, mm -hmm. and across the board. So it's not limited to a few specialties. It's usually when that specialty in their home country, then they pursue uh, that specialty in another country, which is what we often see at current hospital, and I'm sure in well. Mm -hmm. Now, the connotation of tourism means that when done with medical care, there where they will not just come to current hospital, for example, and go back home, but there will be an amount of tourism before they return back to their home country, either them as a patient, and if they are not able to, probably their relatives who often come along with them. Usually multi-specialty, but the pursuit of specialized care outside of their home countries. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, I, I, I through the uh, Kenya um, uh, cancer management policy, mm -hmm. I mean, it talks about establishing uh, an role management in the region and we have seen the establishment of institutions like uh, Kenyatta um, uh, University Teaching and Referral Hospital if I get yeah. uh, how is this expected to plug in into this agenda of making Kenya a medical tourism hub it's all about centers of excellence mm -hmm. and again I say there are buckets of specializations cancer being one of them now, oncology, which is the medical term for different cancers, and cancer can affect any part of the body, is the availability of the oncologists, uh, which we have uh, at current hospital and are also available in other hospitals, and also the availability of facility to be able to manage uh, that cancer care. Mm -hmm. We have seen growing trends of cancer across Africa. And therefore, that is why the interest uh, to develop cancer as a, as a or oncology, rather, as a major specialization. It has significant life effects because it sometimes cuts short, cuts short the life of a patient if the population can get affected. So oncology is definitely a major specialization that uh, we are building, mm -hmm. both from the government perspective as well in terms of offering more and more specialized care in oncology. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Kigode, from where you see it, I mean, um, I, I know the, the insurance sector, you know, is a very in the in the medical tourism because, um, I mean, let's face it, it's, a, it's an expensive undertaking. Mm -hmm. um, has the Kenyan uh, insurance you know, uh, managed to plug into the growing medical tourism? Right. Uh sector has been able to respond to the growing need for medical tourism that is both inbound uh, when we consider and also outbound for those services that not, may not be available in Kenya. Uh, for example, we ourselves to have very robust relations with service providers outside the country where we support uh, our clients and our members who seek medical treatment be available. So uh, being able to respond to medical tourism in that sense. Uh, in terms of designing the medical schemes, we are now seeing to hive off uh, overseas evacuation as, as, a, as a service or as a benefit to members. Uh, additional way in which such services were available within the primary medical cover of a member. And therefore, if a member had utilized part of their Mm -hmm. and uh, it reached a point or reaches a point where this member requires treatment out of the country then really reduced but now we are seeing more of separating local benefit and overseas benefit such that when a member requires they can get it 
I think one of the foremost schemes that has been able to do that is the teacher's medical scheme mm -hmm. that offers the teacher to go out and seek care if that care is not available out there. But looking at the flip side also is the local uh, road and air evacuation part into allowing members who may find themselves outside of the jurisdiction of Kenya and they need urgent and we have the opportunity to evacuate them back into Kenya so that they can get the necessary services. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I would say we are moving away from traditional way of managing uh, health benefits and giving uh, broader benefits to members. When we talk about, um, and, I, and I know this has, been, has always been a challenge, I mean, because um, when somebody is traveling outside uh, the country for means that um, this is specialized uh, uh, um, medical services, you know, that are needed. And I know insurance, you know, they always to save a coin where it's necessary and where it's possible. And, and, and so uh, for, for me to be covered for uh, an outside the medical cover, what, 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 what do I need to do as a Kenyan? Uh, access uh, medical benefits... Uh one can uh, access medical benefits through employer-sponsored schemes or through you know, direct purchase of medical cover as a private citizen. Uh, when one is seeking uh, for medical cover for the HR practitioners or the finance managers that are designing these schemes and engaging with insurance companies do those kind of benefits to be incorporated into their scheme mm -hmm. so that when the need arises, then the members have that opportunity. But gaining power over, uh, over an employer scheme is much higher. But having said that, even when you purchase insurance, private medical insurance cover, then uh, having that information helps you to be able to negotiate, to incorporate that within your policy so that when that need arises, coverage out of the country not to uh, you know, uh, look down upon the facilities that are there locally. We have also a great capacity in country, as has been shared by my colleague here. And so the need for overseas treatment is reduced. When that requirement is there, you need to have coverage. Uh, locally, uh, we see hospitals, Kenyatta University Teaching and Referral Hospital, and other hospitals locally which are now equipping themselves mm -hmm. to manage people desire to go out of the country more and that then builds up on the need for people within the region or patients within the region to come to Kenya as a hub uh, for medical. Mm -hmm. And before you approve as an insurance company, before you approve um, or you authorize a patient to travel outside the country, uh, what factors do you consider? Uh, primarily, the need for medical attention. The fact that the treatment is not locally available, or if locally available, the outcomes are not very great. And the experience working with the various medical schemes, and over time, we have built relationships with service providers, medical service providers, where we know are centers of excellence, and therefore, that becomes one of the considerations. If treatment is not locally available, then uh, a patient gets an approval to go and get treatment out of the country. Uh, if the same treatment might be available locally, it's not very good, and we can demonstrate that by statistics that the outcomes are better elsewhere, then again, we may make a consideration to facilitate that patient. In that case, uh, also saving costs, because sometimes you find that they are competitive uh, and, and, and when you when you when you when you say that uh, when you what, what do you exactly mean when you say the outcomes are not very good in this case uh, I think uh, the doctor here would be able to share this is there. what you are saying <laughs> but uh, I would say that they are growing specializations mm -hmm. in country uh, we have not had as much uh, experience with some of those we are getting uh, more uh, doctors offering those specializations in country and then they have then they money those conditions. Uh, cancer is one of the leading reasons why people go out of the country 
do know that cancer mm -hmm. treatment is now locally available in a, quite a majority of the facilities, but there's protocols that may be available uh, in other territories that may not have, have reached us yet, and therefore uh, we may recommend uh, a patient to get attended mm -hmm. to out of the country. Bye. I mean, the, you, have, um, you have locally available medical expertise to treat a certain uh, ailment. The equipment are there, but you have a situation whereby a patient um, accessing that service locally because of diverse reasons. Uh, it's important also to note that uh, we play a critical role in ensuring that we our medical capacity locally and so we uh, respond to the need for people to get medical treatment also develop the expertise in the process or uh, that you come across such a patient possibly the reasons that are driving that thing uh, what you may see on the surface and so there's a lot of counseling that is done mm -hmm. to be able to support that patient to and uh, also get a, a doctor's opinions that will drive uh, decision making because as we know treatment outcomes are better when you're closer to your relatives more than when you're far away from them. So some of those reasons of such members and we've seen people who have taken the, the decision to, to still mm -hmm. in as much as uh, they possibly had mm -hmm. uh, different uh, opinions. Mm -hmm. I, I want to bring on when we talk about an ideal medical tourism destination, mm. what are the bare minimums? And, uh, and, and remember, it goes back to those two terms, huh? medical and tourism. Mm -hmm. When it comes to looking at outcomes, for, for doctors and hospitals, we are all about outcomes. The patient has to go back to their normal life. Mm -hmm. That is the ultimate outcome. Because if they don't resume their normal life, then we call that an inadequate outcome. So on the medical side, outcome, the patient has to get well. Then on top of that, it is the desire for example, if a patient does, when a patient does get well, that they also get to support the tourism in the nation rather than being discharged from hospital today mm -hmm. and you're on a flight back home tomorrow help if you would uh, pass by Masai Mara and, and, and see a few animals mm -hmm. uh, before you go home and therefore you support the industry and you support the medical industry now the two components are separate yet together on the, work on the outcomes but the hospitality people are also all about giving our patients a good experience of uh, in the country when the patients are here and their relatives. So those two industries work hand in hand. Mm -hmm. yes. and, and when you look at, you know, statistics worldwide, I mean, 71% yeah. of medical tourists um, open heart surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, this is followed by uh, um, uh, stem cell plant. Uh, 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 then you have kidney transplant and, 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 and so much. And when you look at, you know, medical tourists to care, yes. uh, drive them to this country? Uh, that's a good question. It's, the, it's, it's more mm -hmm. Of course, the number one specialization around the world, including Kenya, that people come to Kenya for, that in hospital, is cardiology. Uh, and that is different aspects of cardiology and cardiothoracic surgery. Mm -hmm. that even for us at, at current hospital, it is our number one specialty. It's what we've been known for. Uh, the second one that people you know, travel the heart. Yes. Yes. And now, and the difference between cardiology and cardiothoracic is the cardiology is the external treatment, uh, and cardiology in a surgical procedure. But those two become the main uh, drivers uh, of medical tourism. Mm -hmm brings a lot of medical tourists to Kenya uh, and even to Karen Hospital is oncology. Uh, and I did mention that. And so a lot of cases do come uh, from abroad. The third one is orthopedics. People from come abroad. 
outside Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it, it, doesn't have, <laughs> it doesn't have to be Norway. Uh, it could be it, it Burundi. Could, it, it could be. I mean, majority of tourists who come to Kenya are actually from Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, but we do have also patients from the Western countries come well. And he says we also have outbound patients who come, who leave Kenya and go for, for care elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Specializations of cardiology, cardiothoracic, oncology, orthopedics, uh, those are the main drivers. We especially pediatric cardiology, mm -hmm. interventional pediatric. For example, born with defects in the heart. Uh, yes. Uh, which again is another specialization we do quite well at current hospital. That also drives parents a lot to come out if those services are not available. Sometimes, like you said, the services may be available in their home countries, but they still make a choice outside the borders and come to Kenya for the service. And usually that is driven by one, there may be a relationship with a certain doctor. The patient and the family may be pursuing a specific doctor where they know this particular doctor has more years of experience. I may have a cardiologist in my home country, but I would like to go to a cardiologist in Kenya. Those are voluntary choices that are made. Uh, by but that whole concept brings a lot of benefit to the country that is hosting the patient because we hospital, but even as a country from multiple industries. And, and when you talk about uh, building a strong medical tourism question of one hospital, no, it is a question of a well-supported industry mm. uh, whereby services is not available at uh, current hospital. I can access the same at Kenyatta National Hospital. Yes. If Kenyatta National Hospital is not offering MP Shah mm. or Aga Khan Hospital, and and so uh, as an industry. Uh, do you have a platform where all of you converge to see how you can strengthen uh, these sectors of, of tourism and medical? Yes, definitely. Hospitals do work together. Mm -hmm. We exchange patients, we exchange services, we exchange doctors. And, and to give you an example, one of, this, one of the specializations that we at Current Hospital offer that uh, other hospitals don't offer is a procedure called ECMO, extracorporeal membrane oxygenation, which is oxygenation of the blood outside the body. Now we will go to another hospital mm -hmm. and then send the patient back to that hospital. Similarly, in that, that return, like it's very complicated. It's a very complicated procedure. Because I can even let's <laughs> <laughs> just say it again. It's ECMO, ECMO, extracorporeal membrane membrane oxygenation. Okay, and it's a it's that, mm -hmm. that, that, that we do, and other hospitals may also have other complex procedures. Mm -hmm. Basis, we work together hospital to hospital based on the capacity of each hospital. And we exchange patients both who are locally based and also those who come from other countries. Mm -hmm. We also deal very closely. At the end of the day, we are governed by uh, the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. and they support all hospitals, they, not just particular ones. They charge of one. policy and regulation. They also support on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. uh, when, if we, if we, if we need, for example, to get certain specialisations from support in that uh, in that initiative, so they are also a partner uh, in how we develop the hospitals, because every each hospital tries its best to improve the specializations, because it keeps changing. Remember, medical is stay the same. The way we used to do an open heart surgery 10, 20 years ago is not the same it's today. Very different. very different. The equipment, the same equipment now. The technology keeps changing, so you have to keep upgrading your equipment. The doctors have to keep going back to school and more newer methods of training. So it's a constant growth process, but a very collaborative process in an but behind that is then the payer. Uh, in fact, we were discussing before the meeting mm -hmm. about how hospitals and payers. Minet is a very close partner to current hospital, and we serve their clients significantly. And many of these decisions to send patients for medical function between the payer and uh, the insurer and provider. the hospital. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's a very collaborative ecosystem. Mm -hmm. yes. um, Kenyan um, medical landscape, uh, I mean, and, 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 and granted, I mean, uh, 
medical equipment are very expensive yes. you know i saw one of the hospitals uh, in kenya i mean advertising that uh, they have they have i don't know what is a city scan or M and, and then they were, they were talking about one system costing about a billion shillings mm. and and i was like whoa mm. that's that's very expensive yes. and for example the availability of specialized equipment in this country uh, would you say that we have all the necessary for diseases? Uh, I would not use the word all for all, because mm -hmm. remember, medicine is very wide. It, 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 is, it is very difficult equipment mm -hmm. to cater to every single type of illness. Even for any country in the world? A, for any country in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, the rich nations it's just a few hospitals, for example. You wouldn't go to a very rich nation and find every hospital having every equipment. Equipment are expensive. Kenya does have a significant uh, number of very advanced technology. Like I told you, we have the which is very significant and very technologically capable and very advanced. Other hospitals have PET scans and, and other types of equipment. The process that grows Kenya has grown significantly over the last 10 to 15 years in terms of the ability to provide sophisticated medical hospitals. It doesn't cover, of course, 100%. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a continuous journey of improvement. Even us as current over the next five years to introduce more and more equipment. Mm -hmm. Even the ones we are currently using are also changing. The MRIs of today will not the MRI from now. So it's a constantly changing uh, landscape. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, let's, let's now bring on board uh, Kigoda here. Um, when, you, before, when, when you get those pre-auth uh, requests from patients, and I'm sure you go through all of them, um, top reason why patients would want to seek medical attention outside the country. As I said earlier, that yes, reasons. Mm -hmm. So they go out for oncology treatment. An interesting uh, contribution from my colleague here. We now have uh, hospitals that are equipped with PET scans. I think uh, the Kenyatta University Teaching Referral and Research uh, has brought in the PET scan and uh, a few other private hospitals. This was one of the other needs that p patients required to go out of PET scan. Mm -hmm. So just mm -hmm. contributing to what he said that uh, we are now getting more equipment locally, but yet one of the leading reasons why uh, patients would want to go and seek treatment out of the country in addition to the other uh, conditions that we So before you sign that pre-auth form, mm -hmm. um, do, you, do you first of all recommend that they seek that service, you know, for example, at Kenyatta University uh, Hospital, I also know Aga Khan, they have a, a PET scan. Do you, first of all, advise them to seek that medical services there? Yes, indeed. Requirements in the process of uh, making a determination whether this patient does uh, qualify to be taken out of the uh, We do not want to contribute to the exchange rate uh, in dollar flight and, and stuff like that. But beyond that is that the minimum has stringent uh, processes also to transfer a patient out of the country. The patient uh, would need to get authorization from services. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, at the ministry that uh, all this information sits. Hospital A has these uh, capabilities. These are the number of specialists we have in country. And so they'll run that through uh, that process to be able to make a determination whether indeed patient to go out of the country. So indeed, during our pre-authorization process, that's one of the key steps to be able to check with the director of medical services before now we can process further a patient to go out of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. was raising a very interesting question, I mean, I mean, aspect of medical tourism, whereby, I mean, it's a one of them is medical and the other one is tourism, whereby it is expected that upon recovery, you take time you take time to visit downtown Nairobi and experience the cultural experience there. Yes. Um, is this part of, is the also covered under the, 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 the medical scheme? 
Uh, I think tourism, tourism uh, becomes a matter of choice uh, that uh, if it's enough now to take a walk downtown and do some shopping or buy some curios or uh, visit the national park or for those inbound uh, patients. When you take patients out of the country, one of the key uh, benefits that we have been able to incorporate is a transportation out of the country. So the aspect of accommodation then feeds into the local tourism or uh, hospitality of because it means uh, most likely you find patients who may require treatment, long-term treatment, go check into hospital, attended to by the doctor and have to go and recuperate and come back for reviews or for further procedures. During that period, they are able to contribute to the local tourism by, uh, you know, hospitality and possibly uh, touring the local uh, towns. So indeed, it is not a direct uh, benefit that we give, but it plays a part to contribute to the... Mm -hmm. And I, I, I want to hear this from uh, Dr. Ari. I mean, when you look at the African continent, um, South Africa, uh, you know, leads the number of um, uh, uh, inbound uh, um, uh, medical tourists. Uh, this is followed by Egypt. You have uh, the likes of Seychelles. And also Kenya is part of, you know, the big, the, 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 the big uh, 10. Mm. Uh, so why does South Africa Kenya? It all boils down to the availability of specialized services, as well as equipment, as well as hospitals and doctors. So South Africa, so it has available a lot of these services that uh, we are growing into. So they would have what I would call a head start, but they are have a lot of these special specialties and multi-specialties mm -hmm. that we don't have here. And so when and patients... Why don't we have them? I, I mean... It's, it's a question of time because, for example, like I told you, of, if, 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 we were talk, we were, if we were having this conversation 20 years ago, the conversation we were mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya. Today we are talking about more than five uh, in the country. Mm -hmm. So with time, as <laughs> why, why is it so special? It's a, it's, a, it's a good diagnostic equipment, and it's something we used to send patients a lot. In fact, one sent patients a lot was for simple PET scanning. And, and that's why uh, hospitals invested, including uh, 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 Kenyatta University Hospital, mm -hmm. because it's an important diagnostic tool uh, measuring oncological progress uh, in, in, in a patient. Mm -hmm. But there are many, many other pieces of equipment that are uh, involved in that South Africa has. Mm -hmm. Kenya will get there. Um, we, we are not where we used to be. Yeah. We, we may not be at the level of South Africa yet deliberately, mm -hmm. uh, but I know at the rate at which I see hospitals in Kenya growing, it's, it's only a matter of time before we are able to be at par mm -hmm. uh, with the market leaders. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, Kigode, um, before we take a, a, a break and, 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 and listen, I also want to hear from you. Um, I, I have had these, uh, uh, you know, from uh, uh, many people that medical insurance in Kenya is expensive compared to our, you know, your peer countries and I'm like South Africa, Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia. I, is this true? Not, not true. I would say uh, medical insurance premium is. Uh, is a, is a factor of the cost of medical care and I don't think statistically see is that uh, our medical care is modest uh, the cost of medical care is modest mm -hmm. uh, specialized services or it cost us much more but basic medical treatment our primary health care which is an area of focus is uh, quite uh, maybe what I would say is that the insurance penetration plays a part in the cost of insurance many people uh, purchasing insurance beyond the employer-sponsored schemes by the government for people to move into uh, SHIF possibly and uh, getting them acquainted with insurance matters mm -hmm. will develop the need uh, uh, for people to put aside some money and, and, and pay for insurance. So in a nutshell, our are quite competitive 
Um, and the second factor is that the insurance rate of cover that one is purchasing. So if we took a benchmark between uh, South Africa and Kenya, I think uh, we do South Africa actually has slightly higher rates, uh, maybe driven by the fact so the medical services that their, their country. Yes. Um, we are back in studio. We are in the good company of um, two gentlemen. We have Dr. I mean, not Dr., but Edwin uh, Kigonde. Uh, he's the general manager for Managed Medicare and Dr. Ernest Moradi, who is the head of doctors at the Karen Hospital. Our conversation this morning is around uh, medical tourism. And um, we have about 15 more minutes to go. Um, I, I want to hear this from uh, Moradi. Um, when you look at our policy and regulation environment, mm. is there anything that we need to do on that front that will help drive medical tourism in Kenya? Uh, good question. Already, the government is a very big supporter uh, because when we need to upgrade our medical services or buy equipment, it, it always facilitates. The government does not come, come in the way uh, of growing the specialization. Secondly, we are able to send out doctors for further training and specialized training, mm -hmm. and uh, our government is very supportive in that particular regard because the growth of medical tourism will come when three things keep improving. The skill of the doctors in various specialties, the availability of technology and equipment to provide that care, and of course the provision of other auxiliary services like laboratory, pharmacy, and other areas. Now these three are constantly evolving and constantly growing, and therefore the more that our government supports both public and private sector in getting these three things aligned, the more we are able to specialize, the more we are able to provide more specialized care to patients, and the more we are able to invest, because remember medical is also an investment. We, we, we buy these things and, mm. and we spend to train doctors. So the more the government supports that, uh, the better. Uh, and the easier it is for hospitals, both public and private, to become more and more specialized. And when we become specialized, we are then able to offer that uh, service to more and more countries. The other part that, and I always refer back to the tourism aspect, because for that patient to come, say, from Uganda, remember they have to travel here. So you're looking at border controls. How mm -hmm. easy is it for that patient to come here? Uh, how, is, how easy is it for them to uh, find accommodation? because rarely does a patient come for specialized care by themselves. They will tend to come in the company of family mm -hmm. and friends. And so the government plays then a big part in making it easier for these patients to come into the country, to stay in the country, uh, and find whatever else they need besides the medical care. So it's, it's still a two-pronged two -pronged approach, mm -hmm. uh, but the government of Kenya has definitely done a good job in this area and continues to do so. And so it continues to be a strong partner for us, both on the tourism side and the travel side, because there's a travel. The patient has to travel to come here. Uh, but the more, the easier it is for patients to access the country, uh, the easier it, and the easier it is for us to develop our specializations, mm -hmm. the easier it is to grow the industry as a whole. We have seen, um, you know, a deliberate effort by the government um, to try and make um, movement to Kenya easily and we have also uh, you know part of these reforms we have seen um, a government introducing an um, electronic system you know yes. whereby you can just uh, log in enter mm -hmm. your details and you get your authorization Correct. you know in the next couple of minutes uh, and this is expected definitely to ease travel to Kenya uh, have you seen any impact of this yet uh, not quite directly yet because we still have remember most of our incoming medical tourists are from areas where already travel barriers were already removed. Uh, and I talk about the East African region, mm -hmm. which is the largest provider of patients uh, coming into the country for medical care. However, the wider initiative to make it easier for any country in the world, any citizen from any country in the world to access Kenya will further improve that. That increases the scope, it increases the net, uh, the net of, of, of capture 
in terms of patients, whereby we may be finding it easier for a Ugandan patient, for example, to travel to Kenya. It may be more difficult for another citizen from another country because of visa regulations. If those regulations then are harmonized or made easier, then, then that patient then can come to Kenya. So these initiatives are very good because they will, they will allow more and more traffic into the country, mm -hmm. not just for tourism. People, people again, many times we, 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 we support tourism very well, and, but when, when people are able to come into the country easier, then they can access more services, not just hospitality, but especially also medical services. So that's, that's definitely one initiative that will directly impact uh, medical tourism. Mm -hmm. yes. Kigode, I mean, we have seen a situation whereby um, Yes, as a country, you invest so much into, yeah, um, into your medical field. You know, you have very good trained doctors. You have um, uh, specialized uh, centers. Um, and, and, and so the infrastructure is good. And then you end up with an influx of visitors, you know, who are seeking medical services at the expense of the local population. Uh, are there any safeguards that need to be put in place so that uh, we ensure that even as we attract more visitors from outside our boundaries, uh, then uh, we also do not neglect uh, the locals who cannot uh, uh, afford to pay top dollar for medical services? Yes, indeed. Uh, the first primary safeguard is that uh, any visitor that is coming into the country needs to demonstrate that they have uh, a medical cover. Uh, this is a requirement that we see as uh, visitors travel out of Kenya to other countries. When you visit the other countries in Europe or in the Americas, you're required to demonstrate that you have a medical cover so that you do not burden the citizens of that country with your medical expenses. And so that is one of the safeguards that is readily available where you ca we can then require that whoever travels into the country demonstrates having a medical insurance cover from their country that extends uh, to this country or that they purchase a local cover that then can facilitate them while in the country should there be need for medical attention. And therefore it means when uh, medical bills arise, then they have a cover that will be able to take care of that and not then uh, you know, strain the taxpayer to, to meet their medical expenses. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 and what trends are likely to drive medical tourism in Kenya in the next five years you know, when you look into the horizon? I think uh, one, one of the things that we see a, a great uh, number of times is that uh, we have interactions with medical insurance providers, uh, with, rather with the medical service providers. These are hospitals and clinics and medical centers. What I see is that uh, more and more are these hospitals graduating from one level to the next level. So as we are getting more level three hospitals converting to level four hospitals and uh, getting in more specialized services, then it is going to open up opportunities for people around the region to be able to come into the country to get the necessary medical services that they may require that not, may not be available in their country. So uh, I think the growth of uh, medical providers graduating from one level to the next level, improving service provision, mm -hmm. is going to be a great driver. Uh, I was just reading an article uh, not too long ago and this, in this article, one of the critical things is the doctor uh, to population ratio yeah. should increase. So training more doctors and training more medical personnel does not just end with the doctors, but uh, including the auxiliary services that are going to support the, the doctors in the provision of services. Uh, nursing care, for example, having more specialized uh, nursing care because that's where health delivery is given. As we increase that capacity, then we'll be able to drive more people into our country because we notice that uh, in the region we are a uh, front runner in health. In this, in this field. Yes. Very good. Let's get back to the studio. We're almost winding up our first conversation. Um, our first hour is almost done. We are talking about 10.56 and uh, we should be out by 11. The conversation has been around medical tourism here in Kenya. We've been having a good conversation here in the company of a doctor and an insurer. And now I want to turn my focus on to Dr. Uh, Ernest Moradi. He's a head of doctors at Karen Hospital. And I want to find out from you. Uh, I mean, he's, he's really uh, talked in length, you know, what is expect, um, uh, the, the kind of shift that the industry is expected to take in the next five years. Uh, but from uh, um, a medical uh, a professional platform. Mm. Uh, wh wh where do you see this industry going? And what will shape this uh, development? Yeah. 
in the next five years you're looking at, again, in, in, from a hospital perspective and, and from a doctor perspective, there is always the push to improve on the skills and ability to provide more and more specialist care across more and more specializations, not just one or two or three. And so in this country over the next five years, I do see growth of more hospitals. Yeah. I see within the existing hospitals growth of more lines of specialization. And I see... So, so we expect to see new players in the market. Correct, correct. You mm -hmm. are going to see new players in the market. Mm -hmm. At the level at which they come in... Is the market not is, saturated? Is not because you have a situation where you have, again, when you have a medical tourism hub, mm -hmm. you have expanded your market base. So whereas we may have been serving 30 or 40 million Kenyans a few years ago, yeah. now in East Africa there are 150 million. So the more the catchment grows, the players are expected to grow. Yeah. So we, we will see it's not going to be very aggressive because remember investing in hospitals is, is a major barrier to entry because it's a huge investment. So the same way you haven't seen that many new hospitals even since independence, it's a gradual process that you will begin to see. So you may see one or two new players coming into the market mm -hmm. over the next five to ten mm -hmm. years. But the existing players uh, will also improve in terms of specialization, especially our own strategic plan at current hospital is to deepen, to go deep and go wide. And by that I mean the specializations we currently offer, like cardiology, orthopedics, uh, oncology, go more and more detailed, get more and more subspecialized, get more and more latest equipment, increase the number of specializations as well to be able to serve a wider market. That is the general trend with hospitals and they will tend to grow from level three, four, so you may find a primary hospital is maybe able to provide not many specializations, increasing their level of categorization. Remember each hospital has a category uh, as per Ministry of Health based mm -hmm. on the specializations they're able to provide all the way to teaching. Uh, the ultimate is where you're able to teach and that becomes now quite a specialized hospital Very good. Uh, of which we are in. So you will see more and more, so we'll see more specializations but you will see more visitors uh, because of these initiatives to yeah. bring in more tourists. So mm -hmm. we expect growth in medical tourism over the next five years. Very good. Yeah. And we hope that um, you know, the local, all, all the local players you know, will be up to the challenge and, of course, uh, grow over the time. Yes. Gentlemen, your, your time is very appreci it's highly appreciated because we have come to the end of this conversation at exactly 10.59. Thank you very Thank much. You remain dismissed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for hosting us. Get a polite to it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, you've been watching this conversation live from Broadcasting House. Our conversation has been around medical tourism, and we have been in the company of um, Edwin Kigode, who is the general manager, managed Medicare, Medicare at AO, AO, A, how do you pronounce it? At Minet. Minet Kenya, yes, yes, that's right. And Dr. Anis Moredi, who is the head of doctors at Karen Hospital, you know, giving us tits and beats on how to drive the growth of this industry here really in Kenya. Well, the first hour is down. We're now getting ready for the second hour and our conversation is around trends in the real estate industry from affordable housing to access. All that conversation will take place here. My name is O'Brien Kimani and you're watching this check. <laughs>